Here we are with our first matchup of the day. This is going to be Zim versus Yala, and you guessed it, it's going to be a Mage Mirror. Yeah, no great surprise. Get used to us saying that. I mean, if you want to, if you want to do some good, then you know, perhaps like donate a dollar to charity for every time Raven or I repeat something during the endless <laughs> mage mirrors that we have to cast. Every time today. we say Encanter's flow. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Here, though, checking out the list, though, from Zim. Uh, important note here, and it will be at least a factor to consider, especially in game number one, is that Zim is not running a natural deck of lunacy in his list, whereas Yala is. So that's yep. already, like, I would say just by far the main sticking point here between these two lists. Yeah, and Yala very much Team Lunacy. He actually tweeted last night, uh, actually yesterday afternoon, I should say, after we finished our broadcast. Very unusual to be able to say that, but yeah, yesterday afternoon, um, saying that he you know, made OP and he's expecting one of the Lunacy gamers to be able to take it down. Mm -hmm. So clearly he is of the belief that um, having main deck Lunacy is a, a very, very powerful tool. And you can see why, I think, you know, Personally, like, you know, I side with Gia and Lorinda, um, which I guess is all three analysts, I suppose, of the broadcast who are just saying, like, you know, Encanter's Flow, Burn Strap, forget Deck of Lunacy, don't need it. I'm kind of on that side as well. But every time you see Deck of Lunacy get played and just start to reprocess just how sickeningly powerful what you can do after that card is played, um, you do you do have to reevaluate. And I can certainly understand why... Um, to put it in your words, Raven, for the sake of just having <laughs> one card I was in your deck. Say it as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we to give well, you the man. option. To well, give you the options of just doing I, broken things. I'll bring a much more reasonable response, I guess, to that. It's yeah. The thing that makes me feel like Lunacy might be the way is that you don't have to play it on curve for it to be good, right? We've seen players divert even, you know, mid to late game into Lunacy to go for these different outs. And yes, it might not be as powerful, but it's a way to pull something out the bag and it doesn't, yes. it's not reliant on saying, I need to Lunacy on curve and then I'll win. It's like, no, you can just, just pivot, right? And Lunacy on turn eight or something uh, and still be in a good spot to have some heavy impact on the game. So it's it does give you that different route, but again, if you you know if you want to encounter's flow and just go face majority, then that's a good plan too. And both players here, as we get into game number one, are gonna play that encounter's flow. That's at least two dollars donated to charity already. <laughs> <laughs> they are both indeed talented gamers, yeah. Flow on two, flow on two. Um, but if you will allow me to talk in the abstract just a little bit longer, because again, to preserve our sanity, we'll avoid doing play by play as much as possible today um, in endless mage mirrors. But yeah, I've been pl I've actually been jamming a bit of lunacy again on ladder just because you know the arguments come up again i do like to sort of challenge my misconceptions right and sort of play devil's advocate with myself and if i think something's wrong just put it in my deck and you know see if i'm wrong um and i, I did run into the situation exactly as you're describing where like you can see a lot of games where you'll get down to the end game. You're like, yeah, I don't really see a win condition for myself yet. Um, and in other decks, you'll cast like Renew or Draconic Studies, right? And just try and open a box, mm -hmm. give yourself something random. Font of Power into Varden, for example. Thank you for the demonstration, Yala. Of just like this random outcome that's not in your deck that can give you a win condition that you can't see with your normal cards. Well, like, Lunacy is like that on steroids, right? You can just say, okay, these last 10 cards in my deck don't get me there, so let's turn them into 10 cards right. in might. Um, and it's just not this thing that necessarily has to come down on curve. It is an emergency button. Um, but I still remain unconvinced that it is worth being in the main deck at four mana at this point. Yep, there's a reason a lot of players end up digging for uh, Solarian. Right, late game in yes. Mage sometimes to pull something yep. out of the bags, and it's it's a very similar card. So, let's see where we are so far. Though Zim has gained the board with that Water Elemental, but Yal has got plenty of stuff to keep him going here. Spring Water to keep the cycle going. Does have that Varden you shouted out, but also the Arcane Anomaly as well, which can, we've seen be very very powerful in this matchup. Yep, that is certainly a lot of things you named that isn't the second Encanter's Flow that Yala just drew. Yep, key point here, second Encanter's Flow plus Arcane Intellect is card draw. Yeah, Primordial Studies uh, juiced up as well, just in case we're going to be seeing a um, cram session come out soon enough. Yala does go for the board clear here. It's very, very nicely spotted and very well calculated, getting in the Luminary discounts alongside Firebrand to get it all down, get it all out nice and cheap. Yeah, I it think... It does I... mean one additional turn with no flow. 
Yeah, and, and it's it's another term where he has to also spend a mana on Encanter's flow, but I don't mind it because he's gained the board on turn five. So if Zim wants to, uh, well, he clearly didn't Apex his blast last turn, but of course he is Encanter's flowed as well, but he could have had a natural Apex his blast. So it's always nice to not just give your opponent an empty board and just face as an Apex his blast target, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Zim could have gone two ways there, at least for me. Uh, another mask is always good. It's just more damage. <clears throat> Excuse me. But he did go for the card draw instead, and I like it, right? It's what he's missing right now. The ring toss isn't corrupted, so he can't try and do something with ring toss to generate either board or cards. So I do like him going for that cramp session for now. Yeah, I like it too. He's just very, very starved of resources. He does, of course, have that one flow cast himself, which means if he's able to get some card draw rolling, he can pop off quite quickly, but his hand is is very starved right now. So wasn't a premium card draw option to pick up, but I think any card draw is, is basically premium in that spot. Interesting here for Yala as well, because he's just done second flow, and it's hard to not to want do. to arcane intellect right now, because everything's reduced by two. But it does limit his options for the rest of the turn, right? Like, he can't fireball the Senjin. You know, he, he could arcane intellect and nether win, but just leave the minions on board, which feels a little bit bad, but maybe? I don't know, what do you think? Is that fine to just let the minions sit and just draw more cards? I think it's not the end of the world because he still has the potential to get through his deck, find ice barriers, find ring toss, all that kind of stuff. But he's because he doesn't have that right now, it might just be worth it just to protect. Okay, I'm gonna go Varden instead, which does lock up the board state for a turn. Essentially, this puts it on the later base, right? Like, it's still a problem that needs to be dealt right. with. I was I was thinking about this, but it kind of feels like a play where if, if the flame strike in Yala's hand was discounted, obviously this would be perfect because then you can just flame strike it away the next turn. But it does feel like now this is a problem that still needs to be solved on the following turn, and Yala's not really any closer to doing it. Yeah, it's a tough one, right? Because it's not as even as if Varden challenges this engine or anything, right? It can't even make a trade. Mm -hmm. Yala is going to find himself quite behind on board. Combustion does help, but I do think it's Arcane Insight time. Yeah, draw some cards. Okay, very nice. It doesn't quite line up as well as you'd want. If, if Yala had one more mana, obviously, like, Fireball Ring Toss would be insane. Oh, speaking of insane. Do you Sorry, like more mana, about sir? More mana? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, now I like Fireball Ring Toss. <laughs> I'm not sure. I think you just keep going. Yeah, I love this. Oh, no, well, you can still... You still have the choice, right? Sure, that's fine. I suppose. All right, having now run out of card draw, it might still be the play, yeah. Because you can Rune Orb now to set it up, and now just straight up Combustion is going to clean sure. this up, right? Which looks a little oh. bit better. Chewing Stars Combustion? I mean, combustion just clears, right? Oh, wait, yeah, of course, the spell damage. Yeah, 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 yeah. The problem with this is it doesn't actually corrupt the ring toss, right? Yeah. So he's going to have to go for right. Nether Wind Portal this turn. And it's right. still not bad, of course. He will almost certainly gain a minion next turn. Spell Mage. No, I, there's a lot of spells. Yeah, I really like this, right? Because Zim is going to be disrupted here dealing with secrets. And then by the time he's dealt with the secrets, figured out this is Nether Wind. I guess he knows it's Nether Wind because it's the natural secret in the deck. Yep. Um, but that'll put another minion in play, and then Zim is going to have to spend some time dealing with that secret, uh, dealing with that minion that comes out. And there's a good chance on the following turn that uh, Yala would just get to go, like, mask into Ring Toss, right? Because, the, it, like, Zim won't get to spend too yeah. much of his own mana developing his own stuff. <laughs> As it stands, <laughs> Refreshing Spring Water is kind of the X factor in, uh, in getting that done. But you can see here, if the turn had ended here, right, like, just trade... Mask, Mask of Cthulhu, like trade the 4 3, Mask of Cthulhu, Ring Toss would have been an insane turn, right? Oh, yeah. I think it was a good two turn setup. It's just he, he got hit by the spring water, so he's in a little bit more trouble than he might hope. Hey, it still looks fine to me, though, right? I mean, the 1 3 is annoying, but he could still go for it. I think he ends up on Flame Strike now just because of the extra minion. 
My problem with Flame Strike is he doesn't do any of that disruption, right? I actually, what about Fireball instead? You can still Fireball Ring Toss and keep the 4 3. I've come full circle again. I actually think I like the mask once more because he's got three he's got three of them in his hand at this point. Like it's still gonna clear the board, it's gonna push a little bit more damage. Like I'm tunneling way too much on just trying to get all the mask damage to connect to face, and that's just not relevant. He has 36 damage in his hand now without spell damage or any other draws, right? Like it's it's just not necessary. But then flame striking just pushes five from the minions anyway. That's kind of why I like Fireball Ring Toss, right? You you keep the minions, you push some damage, the secrets go up, and soon he's going to be able to double mask on turn 10 anyway, as a potential finisher. This is also fine, yeah. I think, as long as the Ring Toss comes down, I'm okay with this turn. Yeah, I like this. This is where I ended up. Um, I almost then went full, full circle back <laughs> to liking the Flame Strike again, but... Uh, I think this just makes sense, right? It just, mm. There's three of them in the hand. It does corrupt the ring toss and play the ring toss this turn, which is what makes it superior to playing uh, Flame Strike in my mind. Um, I think the Fireball Ring Toss plan is is okay, but just with three masks in your hand, right? Just get just get a mask played, right? It just it just makes a lot of sense. And, and also as well, he can now Fireball Mask next turn, right? So just it all starts to just like link in you. together and become uh, create a very very smooth curve actually. Mm hmm. <laughs> Yala actually picked Rigged Fair there, by the way, as one of his secrets, which is incredibly rare to see in the uh, in the Mage Mirror, I would say. It's a good position for it, right? Because Yala has minions on board that I Zim wonder. surely needs to answer or will want to answer, should I say. And is it likely that there's going to be a ping going face? You know what I mean? Like, in, in this matchup, it's not often where you actually spend two mana on a ping, right? A lot of the time, it's... You, the deck's so good that you spend all your mana on stuff. Yeah, you can see that Zim's brain has kind of mel been melted by this as well, because I think he was figuring out whether he wanted to play the Apexis Smuggler first to like maybe test the Mirror Entity and spend some of the mana before he dropped the uh, Refreshing Spring Water to refresh back up again. In the end, chose not to. Like, that was my fear, and I think that's generally why you don't see um, Fair Game taken too much, is that... Even when they're clearing your board, they generally do that with Mask most of the time anyway, right? Which ends up just kind of pinging you in the face, which is what you saw in the end. But... Does mean that there's a Fireball Mask this turn, Mask next turn? If Yala feels comfortable not playing any minions, because it's a weird point in the game now, right? Where... You can expect to receive high amounts of damage because he knows the deck's reduced from Zim. He knows, it, for example, he hasn't played any fireballs. But 20 feels at least relatively safe for at least one turn. So I do wonder if Yala thinks, I can just bank 16 damage and he's only on 22. Yeah, so he would deal 16, Zim would be at 6, and then he would have uh, 11 total, right? Either with spell damage plus the mask or mask plus ping would be the same thing. So that would need to be six health on board to prevent lethal, which is very, very difficult for Zim to do. Um, Yala knows he has one minion in hand. If that minion is sizable, like a Mazaki or something, obviously that plays around it. Um, and I know Yala is a play around things gamer, right? He does tend to assume the worst case scenario, especially when he uh, thinks he's ahead as he is right now. So I think this hedge is the best, right? Because it gives him the opportunity to spread longer. He still sets up lethal in some worlds. If no minions come down, right? He still has lethal with right. plus ping. And a 3-2 needs to be dealt with on the board with the Solarian. And he's just eking out a little bit of extra damage over time by doing it this way around. And also to some extent, I mean, Zim is probably pretty aware of what the secret is now. Not 100%, but likely. And... Um, so with the minion down, it makes it less likely again that Yala's going to take face damage, especially after seeing the mask last turn. So maybe that uh, that rigged fair game is going to go off this turn. Yep. It also protects Yala's face from a couple of points of damage from second Mask of Cthulhu from yep. Zim, for example. Like, obviously, rigged fair game is another point of disruption that we didn't really talk about on Yala's turn. So if Zim had been able to go, like, uh, mask into rigged fair game, for example, and set up his own lethal while disrupting with counterspell on the other side... <laughs> That was a high potential. <laughs> well, you have lethal sometimes, Yala, but it seems unlikely. Play it. <laughs> mm. 
Hmm. When I say lethal, sometimes he just if there's no counter spell, he just has lethal, right? Right. In but his hand, but. you would have to uh, like, again. I think a fair plan with ring toss is you always assume they have the best two secrets because they probably yep. do, or the two secrets they want, right? In whatever yes. situation, which is why I kind of like Prime, <laughs> because next turn, mm. if he well, I guess if there's a target, he can go like combustion and still mask fireball, right? Oh no, it'll be one off. Sorry. Mm hmm. Although, I guess after Solaran, you probably won't need Mask and Fireball. What if your opponent took Mirror Entity, though? Then they're at God and they deserve to win. Okay. Oh, well, that's a good start. That's an excellent start. Oh, alright. Slow down just a little bit. <laughs> what is even happening? Alright, fine. Yeah, it should be good. More than good enough at this point. Combustion to break the counter spell into a Pex's Blast. Zim needs to either gain health, which can't be done, or deal lethal this turn, which could theoretically be done, but seems extremely difficult at this point. Yeah. Earlier today, I was on one health and nearly pulled out a Mazaki OTK from to 30 <laughs> against my opponent. It was sick. Na uh, 29 it was. But here, doesn't look likely. The minions are just as much of a problem as whatever Yala can have in hand. And after seeing Yala draw so many cards and knowing there's two Apexis Blast and a, uh, a Fireball in the deck still, well, yep. yeah, you're expecting to die next turn if you Zim. Okay, I like it. Not sure what the out is here because he still needs seven. Oh, and he's used his ping. Rune Dog Fireball. Oh! Oh! Oh, that was effort. sick! Oh, the effort. Yeah, 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 he saw it. That's exactly the out. And he hit it. The one in six for the Rune Orb, he hit, and he needed that to be exactly fireball to pay it off. That was really, really nicely done from Zim. My hand is too full. <laughs> it's in vain. It's in vain, but you have to throw out the well played. That was a very, very good spot nope. in the end there for Zim. It's what I was talking about yesterday when I feel like Mage has really leveled up and it sounds really weird to say, but because people have just got better at it, right? They yeah. know how to play the matchup better. They know how to execute like either how far they can go or what crazy outs they need to go for. And you saw it right then, Zim made the play and if he'd gotten a fireball, he would be the one that's 1-0 up and not that guy there, Yala, uh, who is going to be leading this series, of course. And it was impressive, right? And those those kind of plays are the plays that, you know, win you X amount of more games, which will then get you X amount further in a tournament. So impressive play there from Zim. Wasn't enough for game number one. And Sol, here's where we just uh, take a quick discussion of not really about what happened. We were pre pretty close following that one. But is there going to be any changes in these lists for these players, do you think? It seems unlikely, just giving them a once-over, right? Like, generally, I think you are prepared to play uh, Mirrors with the Mage with your primary. I think we saw a little bit of it um, last week where players were teching for the Mirror a little bit, but I, I wouldn't expect too many changes this time around. Yeah, nothing really jumps out at me, especially when, for example, if Zim wanted to play Deck of Lunacy, he would actually lose a Ring Toss, a Netherwind, and a Mask and right. gain two ice barriers, which clearly is not what you want in the mage mirror, right? So right. those options just don't really add up. So again, I do imagine uh, we are going to see the same again. And I can confirm as a fact, we are seeing the same again, as it is the primary deck for both players as we move on to game number two. And Sotl, I do not see any encounters, but I do see Yala keeping a refreshing spring water. What do you think about that? I am... Um, ah, that! Ah, I understand now. Yeah, so that was almost the refreshment noise, wasn't it? <laughs> know, annoying, yeah. like, lip-smacky refreshment <laughs> noise that some people make. I almost did that. Um, yeah, I, not a fan, honestly. Like, I, 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 would on, I would rather keep something to, like, spend my first mana on, right? Like a Font of Power than a Primordial Studies than a Spring Water myself with no Encanter's Flow. But even then, like... There's a card in your deck that gains you 20 mana when you play it on turn two. Like, I want that one in my opening hand. And the stats seem to support that, right? Where Refreshing Spring Water is a very, very high win, uh, high win rate card, but 
Encanto's flow is just above and beyond by such a distance mm. that I remember making this argument, um, was it back in like Guardian Animals Druid days, where um, overgrowth was so much better than like uh, Lightning Bloom, for example, which was a right. good card, but overgrowth was so much better that I just wanted to be really greedy and mulligan for the overgrowth. And I'm very much the same with the Encanto's flow. And neither player getting hold of what they want in the early game. Zim does have the font. Not really anything too great from it. The Imprisoned Phoenix looks nice. Yeah, very nice. Much more honest game of Mage going down so far, though. Yala is going to start to do some fairly broken Pot of Greed things, but without the Encanter's flows, you can see the, the game progresses just a little bit slower than we've been seeing so far. Also, with 10 cards in hand, it's kind of strange that Yala doesn't really want to play the coin because there's nothing to gain, uh, at least yes. right at this second in time from the coin. Yep. But he has to if he wants to refresh in spring water. So this might actually just be, what do you think, Netherwind Portal Pass this turn? Ugly, isn't it? But it's reasonable because your expected play from your opponent is a Pexus Blast where of course they just have to a Pexus Blast your face and then you would get the Netherwind minion after the fact to hopefully go some way to contest that like maybe you can then clean that up with a uh, Brain Freeze or a Rune Daub like after your Spring Water turn on the following turn so that does seem okay mm. the other option is just to throw out the coin do the Spring Water turn except that you're not refreshing all of the mana at that point because you don't get the coin mana back and just say I'm going to pick up something powerful to do anyway but yeah I think uh, Netherwind Portal turn here is fine fine might not be the, the right word no one's happy with this play except Zim, I suppose. <laughs> um, but, but you know, it, it'll, it'll do for Yala. You know, when you're when you're not an Encanter's Flow gamer, you have to accept that you're going to be doing slightly less broken things on most turns. It's like Zim knowing, of course, that it is going to be that Netherwind doesn't want to give Yala the initiative with the minion, right? So he just goes for this Raz instead. Could have a Pexis blasted, but yeah. seems okay to just land a three six, and it looks good to me. Yeah, I love it. It does two things. Uh, the one that you've described already, of course, he knows it's a Netherwind, so he went minion instead of spell. That makes sense. Um, but secondly, if he'd have gone a Pexus Blast, he could have just summoned a five health minion, right? That happens quite a lot. And then if Yala did have a Pexus Blast and was just choosing not to coin it on the previous turn, he could just go a Pexus Blast straight right back. So instead, he has a guaranteed six health minion that he can play there instead. And Yala here, I think, appreciates the dynamic of the situation and says, okay, you know what? This isn't working. It's a lunacy game now. Let's go. Well, if you put it in your deck, right, you need to spot these points. Wow, okay. Good for Zim, he can kill off that minion, but most importantly now, the refreshing spring water could work wonders for Yala as he can get cards like these. <laughs> wow. He's going to draw all these lunacy cards now. And this game's about to go wild. He just has Glowfly Pride's Fury. It's yeah. the mage counter. Yeah, just switch to Druid. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no answers, though. He needed answers first and foremost before he went for his own board generation because he's just taking too much damage here. Mm. Remember, this is a full-cost deck here, so he hasn't made the Librams of Hope, so he has no guaranteed healing in his deck. Um, sorry. Yeah, no, I mean, it's the right way of saying it. There could be healing in his deck, but he is not he is not guaranteed any healing in his deck as he would be if there were uh, guaranteed Librams of Hope. So he's he doesn't wait, necessarily wait to sit on the fence, subtle. <laughs> Another lunacy. Not really gonna uh, affect too much here. Honestly, getting accused of sitting on the <laughs> raven. That's, the that's why the, it was funny. The person who's had to have fence posts surgically removed from their rear end. <laughs> Untrue. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Low fly swarm gonna come down, but going into Zim's turn seven, which I means I don't think anyone took that as a factual statement, right? Someone Raven. would. I don't, I don't think someone you had would to deny it. Okay. Someone would. Okay. Yeah, flame strike gonna be huge here, clearing off these two twos. Putting Yala on the back foot again. If 
Pale Guardians can ride here, though, getting all the discounts off those Glowflies on the previous turn. So he can continue to make a huge board, continue to try and deny that mass damage. But of course, he's going to just run into exactly the same problem that actual Token Druid runs into, which is Devolving Missiles. The same card that basically every deck in the game runs into, Devolving Missiles. It's absurd. Yeah, I mean, everyone thinks Encantus Flow is good, but has anyone been Devolving Missiles recently? <laughs> Okay. Wait a minute. <laughs> All right, Malevolent Strike's pretty sick, sure. Find that mana beast. <laughs> I, I'm literally, I'm, I'm currently just like mousing over all of his cards, just going, okay, where can a beast come from here? Yeah, it's, it's not really happening. Get him in that Grand Slam. Torrent, right? Over Malevolent Strike? Uh, sure. There's no upside to dealing damage, right? So you might as well just take mm -hmm. the universal one that just always destroys a minion. Okay, Zim's oh, a, lot, come on! a lot better at involving missiles than I am. Uh, I died as if the card today. isn't good enough. Two, there were two nine ones on the board. I devolving missiled and hit one of them three times and then died. <laughs> That's how I devolving missiles on ladder. Wow, combustion as well. It's just smart, honestly, because he knows it's, again, it's a full cost deck of lunacy, right? So he knows survival of the fittest is a threat. Mm hmm. Throws out Invigorating Sermon just to check for the Counterspell. I think Counterspell increases in likelihood when you're getting hit with that Lunacy stuff, so gets rid of that. Now interesting choice, right? Mask for just damage, or he could actually Arcane Intellect because what he has is not good enough. I want an AI. Yeah, yeah I'd, I'd like, I think, I'd I like think the AI the here. Is. Oh! oh. Now that, Raven, is a 4-drop. Yep. But also, there is a Libram in hand. Libram there is, in. but this is not what Yala wanted to spend this turn doing, right? Like, the reason I was so in favor of the AI is that Yala's not getting there with Burn. That's not what his deck does anymore. He needed to find some other some other way to just generate tokens on board, right? And just, you know, push for the survival of the fittest next turn. But now he has to spend this whole turn dealing with the 510, which he can do with the Malevolent Strike instead if he doesn't want to use the Libram, but... He doesn't get to spend any of his other mana at that point anyway, so why bother? That's it. If, if he could do anything else this turn, then sure. Yeah, he just saves the Malevolent Strike. It's just a better card to have in hand. But it is a big deal, right? Now there's Grand Finale with Blessing of Authority available to make one giant minion. He's only seen one Devolving Missiles, though, so that's going to be a risk. Yep. Zim now will really want to be ending this game, right? Because it, although Yala's turns have not looked fantastic, you're still terrified of what Deck of Lunacy can give your opponent, right? Right. Aegwin. Just gonna fireball him, okay? Just, just gonna point it. Oh. Okay. Yep, you see the reaction from Yala as well. Eight eight, that's fine. Mm hmm. I th I think he blessings right. You only really have two things to spend your mana on this turn. One's fireballing the face, and the other one's just making this eight eight a sixteen sixteen. Twelve cards left remaining in your opponent's deck. One of them is devolving missiles. It's probably worth the shot, right? Yeah, because even if it gets devolved. It's still fine. You know, it's, it's not like you just lost the game if it gets devolved. But also, okay, you let it, you don't do it, hit face for eight, and then blessing anyway, and then it's just a turn behind. I think I would have gone for it. Yeah, same. I kind of like it. Obviously, it's hard to say because we're also just staring at the devolving missiles. So it's right. really, really, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd, we'd just jam the thing that gets punished by the card that we can see. But yeah, I'm, I'm kind of on your side there. My powers are never truly gone. This power be crunchy! 
Pretty big brain freeze there. Gonna come down. Zim gets the ring toss as well. Cute little combo. Mm-hmm. Probably rigged fair game, right? I like fair, oh, yeah. She could take it, I think so. Yeah, I'm not sure what the first one was either, but I think the, uh, yeah, I would have gone Oasis Ally and rigged fair game there because mm. Oasis Ally infinitely more likely to go off against um, Deck of Lunacy, right? Like if the, the one remaining seven drop is a Nagrand Slam, for example, that will likely proc um, Oasis Ally. Any of the rushes, mm -hmm. like expendable performers, all that kind of stuff, like it's it's very likely that rush minions come out. What to do? What to Tolmer do? Tolmer is kind of interesting here. Because I just wonder if Yal is at the point where he feels he would need to, like, Soul Mirror Blessing the 1-1. One one, eh, the 1-2. Oh, I see what you're saying, sure. Just just because he's running out of cards, right? Can he realistically he is, yeah. think, oh, I'll get some minions in my last three cards? Like, yeah, it can happen, but you need to work with what you've got now, I think. Right. Okay, he's just going to play the AA instead. Did proc that counter spell, of course, so he knows it's safe. Yeah, and also Ping's face to play around a potential rig fair game. I think because one of them was counter spell, that was the one that he picked that was up My against the rig fair game. So I think it's probably right. Oasis Ally that's left remaining at this point. Not entirely sure. Ram session again. Getting close to destroying the whole deck at the moment. There he is. You can see so much burn buried in the bottom here. Mask of Cthulhu Fireball just buried down at the bottom of the deck that would be absolutely game ending at this point. Oh, decent devolving missiles as well. 4-4, four, four, very killable right now for Zim. You can see that spell damage ruined orb would do the job. But yeah, below Zim average. to leave it up. A drop being devolved into a 5 drop, you would get a 4-5 on average, so... Slightly good outcome for Zim there, just to be able to clear that up. Chooses to burn face and just deal with it with the Snap Freeze instead. I like it. He can Mask and uh, Apex his Blast next turn, right? True. Oh, Sprint. Ugh. One of the worst cards he could have drawn third from bottom of his deck. I believe, if I've kept track of the mana costs correctly, I believe he still has one more big boy in those last two cards, so either a uh, Survival or a Nagrand Slam. I believe there was two in the deck when he cast it, and he's only drawn the one Survival of the Fittest since, right? So getting hold of that Nagrand Slam sooner rather than later could have been the, uh, the big difference here between winning and losing this game. But now that the Devolvings are gone, this 9-10 is a significant amount of health, right? Uh, for This is just lethal, right? He gets guaranteed. Oh, oh with the draws, right. Up here with Pex's Blast. Yep. Nice. Yep, yep, yep. The last ditch attempt there from Yala, but it just wasn't going to be enough. And honestly, it felt like just a lot went wrong from the beginning, all the way back to that mulligan decision of keeping that spring water. He, he obviously, as we can see the game play out, he ended up with two in his hand early on. There wasn't a flow in sight, had to commit to the uh, the uh, deck of lunacy, sorry. So it was just, it just looked like it was slipping away almost from turn one for Yala. But Zim, I think, did really well there. Just played a very, yes, he got flow early enough. He kept the pressure up and he, he did, you know, what he had to do to finish out that game in the relevant fashion there because there is a fear factor when your opponent plays an early lunacy you know anything could happen so you need to keep on top of the damage because zim of course does not have access to deck of lunacy in his build and what i will say to yala's strategy is that i do think keeping spring water plays better with a lunacy version of the deck which you can kind of see right like Yala's Lunacy did roll a little bit low, but because he had double Spring Water in his opening hand, he was able to play Lunacy on four and then theoretically catch up immediately the next turn, right? Because he has so much Spring so much right. spring Water to play that he can just get through his deck, find something broken to do, you know, two mana generate a full board or whatever else. 
get hold of a Nag Grand Slam, whatever it is that he needs to do. Um, theoretically, having those spring waters to follow up the deck of lunacy does help you do that one-two punch, because it's a big problem right now, is that your turn four is very slow. You're going to use it to play uh, deck of lunacy. But he didn't really get the tools that he needed. He got that one push with the uh, Glowfly Swarm. And I think that being met with the one of Flame Strike from Zim's side was probably low key, like the most important moment in the right. game. Because if that one of Flame Strike hadn't have been there, Zim would have had to have scrambled that turn to uh, piece together some way to clear that out and not just get oh. absolutely smoked by uh, Pride's Fury, Survival of the Fittest, all that good stuff. Well, let's dive back in. It's the final game of this series. The winner continues through to top four tomorrow. The loser is done for the week. And it looks like we might have a repeat of the styles going on here again, Sotl. Encanter's Flow on the top there for Zim and Deck of Lunacy and a refreshing spring water for Yala on the bottom. Oh. The risk of being mana inefficient, Raven. I do like it. Yeah, of course. Of course. You never waste a mana. You never waste a mana. Oh, Devolving as well. Not bad be this mini mage <laughs> yep yala shake of the head eye roll standard reaction these days from players to that encounter's flow but this is very nice like one of the big dangers of keeping deck of lunacy against mage is the opposite to this happens so you pass turn one they play font of power you pass turn two they play a minion you pass turn three they play a minion you play deck of lunacy on turn four they play a minion. You're dead. Right? And at that, at that point, you're dead. Yeah, so the fact that he's actually got the minion start to go alongside his deck of lunacy is actually a, a very big deal here for Yala, I would say. What a hand here, Sotl. How do you even begin to work out how to play this turn? Because there's a lot going on. He could go for the lunacy, spend the mana, and then have flow for refreshing water for the following turns. But again, that's still clunky. Could just go in Cantor's flow and like devolve with primordial studies, kill off this mage, and then move on. Oh, it's very difficult and going to be even more so when he gets to see Zim plays one mana in Cantor's next turn. Yes. So I'm of the opinion that you still want to play Nagrand Slam against Mage. Like I think that's still the most powerful thing you can do. I would listen to the argument that Librum of Hope is the boy in the matchup, right? And you do you do want three of those potentially in your deck. Crucially, Yala does have that maximum decision to make, right? Because all of his seven cost cards are still remaining in his deck. So he does have that highly impactful decision to make. Um, there's also the opportunity now to just say, okay, I don't have to go Deck of Lunacy at all anymore because it's still early enough in the game that with Encounters Flow and Spring Water, I can potentially get myself out of this. He doesn't have the information that Zim is still going to be an entire flow ahead here with the second one that he's picked up. We'll see if there's a reaction to that. There is. Um, but they still think there is multiple avenues to go down here. But he does go flow first on, on Yala's previous turn, which means the uh, the full cost deck of lunacy line is out of the window now. Hmm. Okay. Surprising. At least to me. Well, we'll see how it pays off for him here. He could just get the Solarium down as well. Riding at least some pressure on board, but Zim... Pretty much has the dream for now with just such a reduced down deck with this double encounters flow. The only thing he's really missing is card draw, which I imagine from these rune dobs would be the thing he yes. would take. One refreshing spring water, please. No. All right. Tough choice, honestly, between the two on the left. Ring toss, mask of Cthune. Ring Toss is obviously so disruptive against uh, Deck of Lunacy in particular. I've already talked about yep. um, what Oasis Ally can do, but then also just the natural um, Counterspell and Netherwind Portal stuff. And I, I really like this choice for this reason, right? He can mask this turn, Ring Toss active next turn. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Now this is Hearthstone, Raven. <laughs> All right, Liberum of Hope number one. Still two more remaining in the deck at this point. Any big reason not to just play it here for Yala? It looks very powerful. He gets maximum heal. He gets the big minion Divine Shield. Oh, and I can see. It's literally... It, yeah, mm. exactly. It's bigger than the other thing he can play this turn. <laughs> and, and, and he gets him. maximum heal out of it. Yeah. yeah. 
like hasn't seen a devolving missiles yet and if it's not able to be devolving missile it is a minion that can kind of solo the game from this point but at the same time like you, you have to have enough stuff in your deck to just chew through the devolving missiles right so i'm, I'm very much into just playing them with the powerful things wow is he doing it raven Ravens, he do he actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> Honestly, if someone did this to me, I'd probably concede, so fair enough. <laughs> I just don't like playing against this card. Yeah. He did see a mask on the previous turn. He does have a good hand for it himself, admittedly. He does have the potential, of course, of having uh, overgrowths and nourishes in his deck as well, which is obvious which is very much to his benefit. But now this is a big problem because yeah. he has the secrets to deal with on the other side of the board. Counterspell rigged fair game. I love this because with one mana and basically one card to play this turn with yep. counterspell, it is yep. very unlikely that Zim takes any damage this turn at all. Love it. I think best response from Yala is likely just play the minion. I don't think Zim is picking Mirror Entity here in most scenarios. Uh, Zim would know, of course, that there is a minion hanging around in Yala's hand that he hasn't played. And that, that is quite likely to be a large minion because it wasn't played in the early game. But I still think Mirror Entity is a very unlikely choice for Zim here. These, this is the sort of reason why I don't ever play Celestial <laughs> because I always feel like after I've chosen to play it the next few turns I'm sat there thinking why did I choose to play it because I feel like I get myself in worse positions <laughs> but I'm sure you know Yala the much better Hearthstone player than I am of course I'm sure he has a plan yep. you see the rig fair game pick though paying off massively here for Zim Yep, devolving missiles doing its work, devolving your board into some guff. There are nature spells in Diala's hand, it's by Bungle the way. Bungle Fortune's nature? Bungle Fortune's is a nature spell. Oh, it is, it is, it is. okay. Yeah. Lethal! <laughs> Deals with the counter spell, one mana liberal hope comes down. Now with the guff surviving, that will get buffed next turn by the fungal fortunes if it's not dealt with. Ah, Hearthstone's wonderful, Raven. I don't know if you've noticed, but everything here makes total sense. It's quite the game, isn't it? It is, yeah. Boston gets to take off the Divine Shield. You can see the plan slowly working for Yala, though, right? Like, Zim just isn't doing anything particularly powerful with his turns, having to spend one mana on each of these mm. cards. There is now, of course, that second ring toss in hand as well, which is borderline impossible to corrupt outside of, like, he'd have to cast the runed orb and pick something expensive off the runed orb to be able to corrupt the second ring toss. Oh. Or his Font of Power, right? Because the minions from Font yes, true. Would, uh, would be full value, which is why we're not seeing him play Font of Power, because he doesn't have the mana to play the minions. Yep. Well, that seems like a powerful outcome. I like the way this just deals 16 with two mana in uh, Yala's hand right now. Yeah. What to do? What to do? Ooh. There's Librum number two. Still one more remaining now for Yala. The question now becomes, which of these cards does he want to throw away? Although I think, was that natural secret again from Zim? It was, right? So he will know that this is Netherwind. Yeah. I think you even saw the glance from Yala, right? Just double checking on wherever his deck list is. Whoa. Just making sure. Okay, uh, Cloak of Shadows. Useful, useful, sorry. True. Wild Growth. Also useful. Yeah, true. Hysteria. Kind of useful. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. unfortunate. Take five. Is the clear really essential there over the wild growth? 
You've seen both devolving missiles, right? So this divine shield taunt was a very real divine shield taunt, holding down the holding down the yeah. fort against the minion on the other side. And you also like 50% of the time you give up your raz by doing it the way you did it. Kind of weird. Oh, nice! That was the dream outcome from the rune door, picking up the uh, mana biscuit, which not only corrupts the ring toss by costing two, but then instantly refunds the mana as well because. Uh, obviously, this absolute premium, just each mm. mana crystal for Zim right now is worth its weight in gold. And I really like just using this Flame Strike. Yes, there's chances that other big minions could come out, but use the Flame Strike, bank as much damage from the mask as possible, get the Ring Toss yep. active. It's ticking yep. all the boxes here. Got to be rigged fair again. Mirror Entity isn't going to happen. Ice yes. Barrier is some garbage. Would you never consider Ice Barrier against Lunacy? I don't think so, no. Okay. Especially against uh, discounted lunacy, right? Because what hits you in the face from an empty board, Nagran Slam. Sure, sure. One culprit, right? And it's just, it, it doesn't really happen. Or it doesn't happen when you've gone the discounted route. Oh, skull. Uh huh. So he could draw again with Fungal, which would then impact decisions, right? Of. Does he play runic carvings now, or is there a potential minion buff still in the deck? Is he going to go with cutting class instead? So he, there is a theory, right, because he shuffled the prime into his deck, right, which is mm -hmm. a real thing. So there is a chance that he just doesn't necessarily want to cast the fungal. True, form. that's true. Just fireballing. What if you just cloak? Alright, fine. Could, but he could just fireball him. <laughs> could just get him. <laughs> it's a compelling argument, Raven. I'll give you that. That's the card, though, right? The refreshing spring water now for Zim. That's what yeah. he's been looking for this entire time to actually be able to get some stuff done. Yeah, I just... I don't actually know what he's going to get that's going to stop this happening, though, right? Does he have right. to, like, font of power into Varden, but then he can't even cast... Oh, he can cast it with Spring Water. So now he's got Firebrand Apexis. Firebrand Apexis is fairly strong, right? I imagine an Ice Barrier was chosen this time if it was offered. There's still some burn left in Zim's hand. Uh, deck, you sorry. As well. Yeah, that's the problem, right? Is if this Apexis does not go face, then how much burn is actually left to end the game? Because don't forget, also, I believe there's one Libra, one guaranteed Liberum of Hope still remaining in uh, in Yala's deck that Zim has to consider as well. Yeah, and although... I've reached the point where Zim has to consider that by saying, I never beat it, therefore I'm... Yeah. Right. And that's the problem, isn't it? Like, because... Although you could say, oh, well, my opponent's only going to have four cards, right? It's not like a handful. It's like, well, when you play Deck of Lunacy in this, you generally get a ton of card draw. Yes. I think all of these go face and then Chaos Nova happens. Uh, or actually, all of these go face, a spell happens. Then probably a second spell happens. So you test Counterspell and Netherwind Portal that way. And then you play uh, Chaos Nova as your third spell. Yeah, he could, like, fungal into Cutting Class, right? If he, if he's bothered about the Prime. Yeah, or he could cloak into Cutting Class if he wants to still hold on to Fungal Fortunes. Because he could still choose to just go hardcore draw for the kill this turn, right? Yeah, I actually think, though, cloak might be useful because he knows that there's still a Fireball and a Pexus Blast left. Right. So I think he'll actually want cloak to activate. It's fair. Wait, that's going face. Are you going to double cloak then? Are you gonna, oh, sorry, are you going to double Nova? Are you going to Nova ping? No many questions. <laughs> <laughs> questions abound, Drew. Yeah. Sounds like you were auctioning off the turn. You're going to Nova, got a Nova, going to double Nova, going to double Nova, going to yeah. Nova the ping. <laughs> also, the Prime so does cost one, right? It was shuffled in before the alignment I believe happened. so, yes. So now Yala has the opportunity to go glide into Prime at just mm -hmm. like any point almost. Pretty cool.
Those are not it. I mean, th this 10-5 just has to be fireballed, right? Yeah, I mean, Zim oh, wait, desperate, you, you, desperately searching for a way not to do that because, I mean, even then, if he shoots a Pexis at it, he's in just as much trouble because he just needs all of that stuff to go face or else how is he going to end the game? Yeah. Oh, well, now he can combust with pink, right? Yeah. Because you being put to one, I don't think it's going to matter. Is the 2-2 then... in the ping? Hmm... Then the ping, yeah, I mean, he does get put to one, and then his remaining cards, he has an Apexis Blast left. That's 11 damage. He just he can't get lethal, right? So he just gets uh, he... in the face the next turn. Oh, is it not with Aegwyn? Okay. I didn't know no. whether it was with Aegwyn, yeah. Doesn't have the we... mana, right? If he had 10 mana, if this was a normal game and he'd got all the way up there, then yeah, sure. But Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it's him shake of the head. I think he knows. Okay. Didn't know whether he wanted to heal first then, just in case. In case, what, like 50 card draw? Yeah, and he just dies. Yeah. Like, oh, the claps. All right. <laughs> well, yeah, that's going to be game. Never mind. <laughs> that is going to be over. Yeah, <laughs> takes the victory <laughs> over Zim. In a very close series, actually, you could see it going either way, and I think that is one of the the most struggle-filled series that, that we've cast of a Mage Mirror. I think a lot of the time they feel like they're a little bit more one-sided than we saw this one go. And we did see, again, just the difference there. And as I mentioned at the start, the key point of lunacy versus not in your primary deck, right? Because we saw twice Yala went for lunacy plays in this series. And obviously Zim didn't even have the choice, but looked to have more generally powerful games in terms of the overall base game plan. Yeah, and obviously that game very quickly not only became about Deck of Lunacy, but it became about Celestial Alignment. And yep. I love the play from Yala. Like, I, I will keep it 100 with you, Raven. I wanted to say I like jamming that as soon as possible, but the reason that I didn't is that I'd gone quiet and I was checking whether, like, the interaction had been fixed yet with discounted cards. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Celestial yeah. Alignment, and then by the time I found the answer, it had already been done. But I do love jamming that as soon as possible against box classes, right? So, like, Mage opens a bunch of boxes, by which I mean they discover a bunch of cards, they generate a bunch of cards, there's a lot of created by. Same with Priest, right? So against those two classes in particular, you punish them so hard with Celestial Alignment, because you can see, look at Zim's hand at the end of the game. All just completely unplayable garbage, right. because it's generated from these one-mana spells and that you got from